Welcome back guys, Derek King, Kingfish on YouTube. I just wanted to take a moment to make a video to talk to you about the some absolute best ways to guarantee that you can rid yourself of green water. So, now those of you, you know, who know, you know I've been working on this pond. So please forgive it, you know I'm still working on it, so kind of looking at ideas for coping and stuff like that, and I'll cut that liner back and all of that as I get to it. But, um, you know, this pond has only been up and running for about two weeks. All right, now this water did pea soup itself, you know, within the first, I would say three or four days that I actually put the fish in the water and started feeding. I actually feed pretty heavy, okay? Because my intent is to grow those fish. And you'll see I'll make another video later on. Well, you know, my pond at its deepest is a little bit over six feet. Now you notice you can see clear down to the bottom. Here's why. I actually use both a combination of plants, as you can see, carrot feather, grasses, water hyacinth, all of those things, calla lilies, iris, in the water to outcompete single cell algae. Okay, now in addition to that, so you know, in addition to that, I actually see the number of plants I actually have in the waterfalls. My intent is to always outcompete. Now again, I did this from the very beginning, but the water still turns green. My intent is to always outcompete the algae. Now, in addition to that, you know, as I'm still planning and still getting this thing together, so please forgive me, but in addition to that, my biological filtration is extremely, extremely robust. So, as you see here, I have um, a converted sand filter. There's K1 caultness in there. There's also K1 caultness in here. My pond is roughly 15,000 gallons. Um, as you can see, when you actually look at the size and you look at the depth of the pond, it's a pretty big, pretty deep pond. Now, in addition to the plants out competing, the algae, I actually have a very large, very, very large UV filter. So now as you see on this particular filter, I have it teed off here and the water is going very, very slowly as you can look through that sight glass. Now here's what you notice. The water is being teed in two, two different places, but primarily, that is a um, jet, and then I have another jet on another filter, but the water's coming down and coming very slowly through this large UV. And again, forgive me, I still got a lot of this stuff to actually clean up, but my main thing right now is the functioning of the pump. Now, that water actually goes into this large UV filter, then over into this DIY floating bed media filter that I actually made, okay? So now, and I'll, I'll lift this up. So my intent as you know, as you know, is to have a very large fish load as it relates to size. I may or may not, you know, increase the number of fish. But now here's my floating bed filter. Um, I'll make a, a video on here later. I actually have another video and I want to kind of keep my focus. I have another video I'm actually going to make on that DIY filter there in terms of a seed filter. Um, I didn't actually put it on here and I'll explain it why in another video and my intent there is to actually get one of you to actually improve on that design. It's actually pretty good right now. Um, that's also a waterfall filter, a biofall filter. But then again, you see the number of plants that I actually have within the water column. You know, all of those plants, that parrot feather, that other type of plant there, I forget what it's actually called, I'll look it up, that grass, those kind of things that I actually have in the water column, all of which are designed to outcompete the algae. Again, I'm about roughly from the from the actual water, I'm about seven or eight feet higher than that. And that water is about six feet deep. And I'm sure you can see all the way down to the bottom and you can see that fish near the bottom. Right? That water is perfectly clear. Again, for a few reasons. One, that large UV filter. Two, Look at the plants in, in this waterfall. Again, two waterfalls. There's a lot of plants in these in these water columns. My intent is to let them overgrow. So it's always going to outcompete them. Now, because the majority of my fish are pretty small out, and I'll, you know, I want you to bookmark the timing on this video. It's April 14th when I'm actually making this video. And I will use that he Utsuri, for example. That he Utsuri that you actually see swimming right there. And it's fish that you, you know, a couple of these sankeis and stuff like that. Those fish are roughly, I would say, eight inches or so. You know, no bigger than that. That asagi down there at the bottom might be 
I would say 16 inches or something like that. Um, that Kuaku down there is probably, I would say 18 inches or so. All right, so both of those fish are. So now, again, you can see clear down to the bottom of my pond. Now, here's something that I have to address. It's pretty hot out here today. It's actually very hot. At, well, right now it's you know a little bit less than 80, but it got it went north of 80. But as you notice, my fish kind of are staying off to the side because they were trying to seek shade. Another thing that I'm going to do to help them out compete, I'm going to add more plants to this pond by building a floating island in the middle, which I'll probably use parrots feathers and other things. And I'll probably do it roughly eight by six or somewhere around that size, or maybe even an eight by 10, you know, a very, very big floating bed because as if the summers here get pretty hot, they get north of hundred degrees. And so, you know, those of you who keep koi clearly understand, and we all know as koi keepers that they can get sunburn. They do need somewhere to actually find shade. Now, as you notice, I have very, very large cypress. Those cypress are probably 30 feet tall and they cast a shadow over here in the morning, but you know, at this time of day, the sun is that direction. So, you know, this is absolutely in full sun. I just wanted to take an opportunity to show that to you because this water did get pea soup green, you know, within about three days and I could not see, you know, down there at all. I couldn't see the fish in it at all, but I'm not afraid of that. I do know how to address it with, you know, giving my pond a little bit of time in terms of letting my plants out compete it, letting the biological filtration, you know, uh, do its thing and letting my UV filter actually slow it down and let the water turn over and let it address all of the water. So again, this is Derek King, Kingfish on YouTube. I just wanted to share that with you. Also give you a little bit of update on my pond. I'm still landscaping it, still trying to get working on this coping and all of that. But again, I have to do it while I go to work. Today is Saturday. I actually had to do some work today too, but still at it. If you have any questions or anything like that, just put them in the comment section. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.